Welcome to this series of podcasts focusing on the dermoscopic features of basal cell carcinoma and on the usefulness of dermoscopy in its diagnosis and management. Compared to other skin tumors like melanoma or squamous cell carcinoma, BCC may be characterized as the favorite tumor of clinicians since it is relatively easy to diagnose, feasible to manage, and it is usually associated with a good prognosis. The introduction of dermoscopy in the everyday clinical practice made things even easier since the dermatoscope facilitates not only the diagnosis but also the management of the tumor and the post-treatment follow-up. Specifically, before dermoscopy, a tumor like this would be assessed as suspicious for BCC, but other tumors such as SCC would also be included in the differential diagnosis. While today, with dermoscopy, a definite clinical diagnosis of basal cell carcinoma is absolutely feasible, allowing a correct management scheduling in terms of timing. But much further than that, dermoscopy enables the detection of BCC in such an early stage that the tumor is not only clinically inconspicuous, but virtually invisible. In addition to enabling a very early diagnosis, Dermoscopy provides other clinically relevant information, for instance, by predicting the tumor subtype. For example, these two clinically similar basal cell carcinomas differ significantly in terms of biologic behavior and should be treated in a different way. This is because the tumor on the left is restricted into the epidermis, so it is a superficial basal cell carcinoma, while the tumor on the right is invading the dermis and dermoscopy, as we will see in the next podcast of this series, can provide this information. Finally, dermoscopy provides a much safer assessment of the treatment out outcome of BCC, especially after the use of non-surgical modalities. Starting with the value of dermoscopy in the diagnosis of basal cell carcinoma, the first descriptions of the dermoscopic pattern of the tumor go back to the very early years of dermoscopy, while the list of BCC-related criteria has been several times enriched and updated, as in the studies mentioned in this slide. Today, there is a long list of dermoscopic structures that may be seen in basal cell carcinoma, which can be found in several review papers as this one, often with educative, representative images of each criterion. With all this information available in several papers, in this podcast, a more simplified grouping of the dermoscopic criteria was selected, based mainly on the usefulness of each group of criteria in BCC diagnosis. According to the simplified approach, four different groups of criteria dermoscopically characterize BCC. Pigmented structures, vessels, ulceration and translucency. The first category of criteria is maybe the most diagnostic in terms of specificity. This is because most of them represent peculiar structures that can rarely, if ever, be seen in any other tumor. The most characteristic example are the so-called maple leaf-like areas that are peripheral bulbous extensions of brown color reminding the shape of a leaf. Here is another characteristic example of leaf-like areas. A very similar criterion are the spoke wheel areas, which are brown radial projections beginning from a dark center, and the concentric structures, which are globular and consist of a darker center and a lighter periphery. Spoke wheel areas and concentric structures are often found within the same lesion, and in fact they represent variations of the same dermoscopic criterion. Very often, especially at an early stage, the pigmented structures are very small and project as brown dots. The morphologic overlap among the, all the mentioned brown pigmented structures is obvious. For example, it would be very difficult to characterize this structure as a leaf-like area, a spoke wheel area, a concentric structure, or just as a brown dot. In fact, it is not important at all to decide how to call this structure. What matters is that all brown pigmented structures correspond to pigment deposition at the level of the dermoepidermal junction and when present, they are absolutely diagnostic of basal cell carcinoma. When the pigmented dots are very superficial, they project in perfect focus and then they are called in-focus dots. 
In conclusion, leaf-like areas, pog wheel areas, concentric structures, brown dots and in-focus dots can be encompassed into the umbrella term brown colored BCC criteria and they are extremely useful for the diagnosis of basal cell carcinoma. In fact, these are the criteria that, when present, allow the diagnosis of clinically invisible tumors because these structures, even if very, very small, are highly characteristic. However, although very specific, brown structures can be seen in a small proportion of basal cell carcinomas as shown in this slide. In contrast, as shown in this table, blue colored structures are much more common. The blue structures of basal cell carcinoma correspond to basaloid nests in the dermis and are divided according to their diameter into nests and globules. But again, this discrimination between nests and globules is only for descriptive reasons and has no practical relevance. Blue nests and globules are usually well demarcated and are also very helpful for the diagnosis of basal cell carcinoma. For example, in this case, the vascular pattern is not so typical, but the clear-cut presence of blue globules directly points towards the diagnosis of BCC. Here another basal cell carcinoma where the presence of blue globules excludes any other diagnostic thought. In this case, vessels are not visible at all. However, these well-demarcated nests and globules predict only one diagnosis, basal cell carcinoma. And here one more of the many basal cell carcinomas that are mainly diagnosed from the presence of pigmented structures. In conclusion, pigmented structures of BCC may be brown or blue in color and are highly diagnosed.